10 clear signs of maturity. One, when you know the other person is lying, you just smile and let it go. Two, you understand that life is better when nobody knows anything about you. Three, you realize your mental health matters way more than any relationship. Four, it has become 10 times easier to outgrow your lazy and unambitious friends. Five, you never take advice from people who are not where you want to be in life. Six, you never force anyone to choose you. Instead, you let people do whatever pleases them. Seven, you understand that no one owes you anything. You play to win your own quote, battles. Motivation for today. Eight, you have realized that you are not responsible for other people's happiness. Nine, you don't allow pain to destroy you. Instead, you build strength from the pain. Ten, you have mastered the art of taking action without Stay waiting for the right time. Ten clear signs of maturity. Perfect practice makes absolute perfect moments. Nothing's perfect. Staging perfect practice makes perfect moments staging beginners intermittent intermittent or in a in the, what do you call those people kind of not beginners but not good intermeters and then professionals i know beginners and professionals the, the one in the middle not so good practice Perfect practice makes perfect moments. Our Willamette Road Club. Perfect practice makes perfect moments. Go win us a title. Bring it to Portland, baby. Competition is what it's about. Perfect practice makes perfect moments go get us a world title at least national if not just enjoy the water for what it's worth it's gonna be much better human beings when you're 80 years old this will be a perfect memory and our swimmers there's a relentless swim team we visited the Columbia the other day, and here's the Willamette. Wonderful, perfect practice makes perfect moments. Well, guess what? Kayak fishing. Not after the big ones, just after the perfect moment. The perfect relaxation. The perfect life management skills. You have to have an outlet. And I think we all found it. Can you live without it? Nah, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> 503, baby. All right, finally entry achieved. Zero gravity. Oh, that feels so good. Water therapy, baby. Water therapy. Getting off your feet. Zero gravity. I don't think it's the fishing that's addicting. I don't think it's the fish or the catch of the fish. 
I actually do believe it's the therapy of the water. The buoyancy of the of weightless feeling. The elements. The physics. But hey, the catch is the bonus of excitement. Thank you. If I catch, wonderful. Maybe we can share a moment. All right, here we go. Anything that comes up is a blessing. Thank you. And I will do everything to make sure you go back safe. Catch and release until I'm hungry. Then, of course, I have to eat you. For 40 years, every eagle has to make a difficult decision. Its claws are no longer sharp enough to hunt. Its beak becomes bent and blunt. And its feathers become thick. The eagle has two options. Either it dies or it goes through a painful change. This painful change is that the eagle must go to the mountain and crush its beak on a rock until it falls out. When the old beak falls out, a new beak grows in. With the new beak, the eagle rips out its claws and new ones grow in. Then the eagle plucks out its feathers and new ones grow in. This painful journey lasts 150 days. But after doing this, the eagle gets a new life. Sometimes we need to get rid of our old self in order for a new and better version to emerge. Eagles can live up to 70 years because they are mentally strong. After 40 years, every eagle has to make a difficult decision. I'm doing a crankbait diver less than six feet deep with, with 63 feet of line out. Let's you know what I catch when I catch it. Set your goals high. Quit thinking about what's wrong. Start thinking what's right. Love a little more, hate a little less. You have no idea what you're capable of doing. Make up your mind today you're going to figure it out. Waste your life. Set your goals high. Quit thinking about what's wrong. Start thinking what's right. Love a little more, hate a little less. You have no idea what you're capable of doing. Make up your mind today you're going to figure it out. Waste your life. Trust me. Number three, he here. Here's ten facts every woman needs to know. Number one, you should never ever have to tell a grown man how to love you. That's pathetic. Number two, what one man won't do, another man who values you will do. Trust me. Number three, he's gonna cheat if he wants to, and there's nothing you can do about it. But don't blame yourself because it's not your fault. It never is. Number four, please stop accepting the phrase, well, this is just who I am. Not acceptable. Number five, a man is going to treat you exactly how he feels about you. Think about that one. Number six, when he then shows you how he feels about you, even if you don't like it, believe him. Trust me. Number seven, men will literally do anything for the woman he truly loves. Number eight, if he really loves you the way he says he does with his mouth, his actions will always back it up and tell you he means what he says. Number nine, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate. Oh, we got Ladies, a, a hazard in the water. Be Whoa, boaters. Alone. Come out Some here with your sea boats. Today you're important to them. The Tomorrow you're nothing to them. That's real life. That's like almost a quarter way out in the river. Hazards everywhere. I just watch you. <laughs> well, let me ease on, ease on down the road. No, I touched your door. Yes, you did touch his food. No, no, I touched his food. You touched his food. All right, I have arrived to the fishing grounds. The water level is beginning to recede. Now the bass will be coming up early morning. Top surface strikes 5 o'clock in the morning to around 7 o'clock in the morning. They'll be feeding in this area here. Crankbaits, trolling crankbaits, very successful. Drop line worms, just as successful. The hunting grounds, I wouldn't call it the hunting grounds, but this is the fishing ground. I got to break my habit of this area. It's not the only area that carries fish in it. I could be reducing my chances of 
a 12 pound bass by sticking it in one area. So I'm gonna time this area out for about an hour and 45 minutes just because I do like it. And then after that, I'm gonna, if I have time in my day, I'll go somewhere else and see if I can find another location that I like. They would call these waypoints. Let me turn my uh, fish finder on, not to mess with myself. I usually don't like to troll with this on because every time you see a marking, you can't help, or I can't help myself, but try to throw a crankbait at it. So, just for depth purposes, I'm at 12 feet, so I don't snag, uh oh, I don't hit the bottom of my not running bottom. 63 feet of line out. What a four foot to six foot crankbait. Deep diver or medium column diver. Alright, so 13 feet. That's generally that's generally where they're at. Let you know what I catch when I catch it. Insp inspirational word for the day would be never give up on something you really want it's difficult to wait but worse to regret some good markings already right there that's why I don't like trolling with this thing on I like to wait for a strike and then find out what depth I'm in Got to get a pattern before I ground this favorite crankbait of mine. Get out of nine feet of water. All right, so now I'm gonna start looking for the shelf. Sorry for that interruption. Got a little markings, little markings, little markings. Gotta play with my equipment in order to know how it works. Let's see if I can get something clear in that thermocline. Still in 13 feet of water. 15 feet. All right. I'm basically looking at the looking at the bottom of the structure here. They'll hang out in this area, down in this area as it starts declining, getting deeper. I like to I like to throw down into the bottom part here from 10 feet down into 18 feet and then see what's lying what's laying right on these edges here now, now it's flattening out getting a little deeper 20 feet see, see right here I want to throw into that 20 feet I just passed that area up I think I'm gonna anchor down and throw into that 20 feet showing it right here minus it I'm gonna throw into this area right here all right let's see what I can bring up to say cheese and hopefully the hook release will be excellent if not we're gonna have a fish salad we got we got one so far I haven't had it perch in a long time. And so that'll make a nice little personal salad. Or even filet. Let's see there. See all these markings right here? I'm gonna run my kayak, uh, run my crankbait through this little. No, that's about I should put a deeper uh, a deep diver crankbait, a wiggle work. Yeah, that's wiggle wart crate bait territory. I didn't bring, I didn't bring that with me today. 
I'm gonna start featuring my wiggle wart and what it can do. Uh-oh, let's see. 25 feet, deep alarm, deep alarm. All right, let's get it. Shut you off so I can focus now. I got a strike, well, I had a strike. See? Oh, 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 oh. Right. oh yes. Throw it right through them. I'm gonna go back that way. I gotta, um, I'm gonna set up anchor behind me anyway, so I'm gonna troll through them again and see if anything wants to come up. I'm gonna hold the, hold the reel this time in my hand. Well, my anchor's lying behind me. Release on this side. Just in case I get a nice sized fish. Put you right here. Organization, organization. That is the key. Once I feel comfortable, then I can feel. Since the fish is getting ready to bite, once I feel comfortable, once I feel comfortable, do not want to lose any of my gear. Pay attention to everything. Limited space. Turn you off. Well, let's turn you that way so I don't kick you off. Uh oh. All right. Retroll that. I did get a bite. It was a small, it was a, under a pound. Can't wait to start casting you out. Very soon, very, very soon. My casting grounds right here. I usually use spinner route, spinner uh, reels for that. But I'm learning how to use a bait caster without birds nesting. That's what I'm practicing. That was 50. That was 58 feet of line that I just cast. So let's see. That strike came in nine feet of water. So I'm gonna run a troll real quick. And see what it wants to say. Hi. It got a little action on the on there. Wasn't holding it, wasn't prepared for it. Let you know what I catch when it catches itself. Got a little bass playing with my line. Who wants to come up and say cheese? Oh, that's the lead. That's the, oh, that's the lead dancing down there. Thought I was getting a strike. I got here at seven o'clock. I'm just now settling in at 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I wanted to have about two and a half hours of fishing. Looks like I'm gonna have about maybe one hour of just solid good fishing I don't know if this area is going to produce or not let me see what kind of markings are showing and where I need to be throwing at because right now I do not know where the fish are even at right now and so to take care of that let's see got to start getting into a perfect practice of habit let me see I just threw in front of me best results and I'm not one who likes to guess so how are we looking over there twenty two feet
15 feet markings or the calibration that first beat was a calibration beat so there's no fish in that area so I got two pole endorsements so I have two poles soaking right now with uh, night crawlers I brought of course four night crawlers with me once I uh, piece those out and fish them and I'll be done for the day Sixteen feet of water. Every calibration marking. I figured I should get my first strike within ten minutes. I usually go fifteen minutes, and then I'll re recast, and then another fifteen minutes, and then recast, and then ten minutes, and then relocate. And that'll be my pattern. But I might just go ahead and relocate because I haven't gotten any markings here. So no markings. Oh, there we go. Right in front of me. Right down below me. All right, let me cast behind me. Let me cast. That was 14 feet. Let me cast behind me shallow. Let's see if they're hanging out behind me. I might be casting in the wrong direction. All right, got a calibration mark. Eight feet. Ten feet. Okay, got one marking right near the kayak. My anchor is on on this side, so and the current is incoming. So if I throw out in that direction, there's a good chance that the fish might run into my anchor coming up. But that's the only markings that I can see. So I didn't see anything on my port side. I didn't throw out that way. So let's see. It's on the port side. Hold on. Let's see what's over on the port side. I'm not really liking this this location that I didn't. Should be getting a calibration mark. Not really liking this location. And what I don't want is I do not want any preschool fish. I don't want to take a chance on uh, killing them, taking them off the hook, because they're too small. There's nothing over here. All right, I'm going to give this area 15 minutes, time it out 15 minutes, and I'm out of here. And we on to the next area, 14 feet. Gotta decide if I'm gonna go deeper or if I'm gonna go and stay shallower. I'm on a clay bottom, so I'm not happy about that. Don't want to give up no no lead if I don't have to. All right, light tackle is for this reason right here. I can always have to have a sturgeon pole. And I can always catch sturgeon. It doesn't quite look right having a heavy action pole for a quarter pound fish. <laughs> but hey, whatever will come up will come up. And whatever equipment needs to be used to get them to come up, 
Let's see if this markings are right. I should get a my, now my anchor's right here. I should get a bite or a nibble within the next ten minutes. Should get some kind of action in the next ten minutes or so. If not, we're gonna re, we're gonna relocate. And what do you know? Three minutes. And these little fishes are hungry. Well, they have to grow. So I got two nibbles, got some action. I'm gonna set this hook on the next little bite that I get. Now they're just eating up my worm. They're nibbling at my worm. I've only brought four worms with me now. I'm gonna be playing games. Get on the hook. But eating the tail off, exposing that hook for your buddies not to get on there. You're going to make me want to take you home and have you for a salad. Yeah, that's what's going on. Getting a little polywall nibbles down there, little fish. All right, I'll let you know what I catch when when it happens, when it catches itself. Let's see here. Did I get snack? No. All right. Let's see what wants to catch itself. Well, my markings are good. There was fish on this side. And like I said, they just nibble up my bait. They just eating off the tail of the hook. Little, little micro fish. I only brought four worms, so. Gonna make this worm last. Look at that. They just ate all that off. Exposed the hook. Now they just. I'm gonna help you guys out. I'm gonna help you out. You see the hook? Don't eat it. I'm not gonna put another piece on there. I'm gonna use this. Reel in this other deep, deeper rod. Throw this back in the shallows. Behind me, little tiny micro fish. I'm gonna have me a salad today. Not taking it personal, but hey. I got four worms to work with today. And it ain't looking good already. Get you situated. Hopefully I didn't I don't get snagged. Threw out deep with this one, 22 feet. My, my lucky lake said hey, there's nothing over here. There's only one way to find out. Get organized, get comfortable, and start getting the rhythm. Got to replenish my worm bed. I started a worm bed early May. And these are all the worms that I kept alive since then. Look at that. Nice and juicy. They were thinner than this. They plumped up since I've had them. I like to use oatmeal crushed oatmeal instead of throwing the oatmeal on the top surface and just let the worms come up and and feed I'll grind the oatmeal up into a fine powder and then I will just mix it in mix the oatmeal and the soil together 
So I fit in uh, and this stir it all the way from the top, make sure it's uh, mixed in uh, top to bottom. A good little mixture, top to bottom. And that way when they're down below, in my theory, they'll be eating the uh, oatmeal instead of having to come up to the top. And they'll be, they eat their body weight daily. So I'll go about a week or two without putting any lettuce or any worm feed or oatmeal and then uh i'll keep it moist not wet and not dry and your worms are lasting that way it's my first year preserving my worms so they nice and juicy so that method i think that method that i'm using grinding up the oatmeal and then putting it in the soil with them. And then I'll put uh, some oatmeal or, or, or lettuce up on top with a wet newspaper. But it's time to replenish. let you do what you do and I can focus on this shallow rod yeah, let's tighten that up a little bit there we go but you know what wants to be caught when they catch themselves in our perfect practice, aren't we? Well, we're everywhere this morning, aren't we? Dig, dig, gotta put in that effort. Dig, 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 dig. There you go, there we go. That's a national pace right there. Dig, 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 force. Let those paddles just barely skim over the water. That's what I heard that she's supposed to do. There you go. You see that burst of energy? When you, know, when you, got, when you know someone's watching you and they got interest in you, you will power up in anything you do. Let's go, let's go, 503, let's go. Anyone out there that's interested? 40 years, every eagle has to make and, a difficult uh, decision. On the its claws are no longer sharp enough to hunt. Yeah. Its beak becomes bent and yeah. blunt, and its feathers become yeah. thick. Yeah. The eagle has two options, either it dies, or it goes through a painful change. This painful change is that the eagle must go to the mountain and crush its beak on a rock until it falls out. When the old beak falls out, a new beak grows in. With the new beak, the eagle rips out its claws. And new ones grow in. Then the eagle plucks out its feathers. And new ones grow in. This painful journey lasts 150 days. But after doing this, the eagle gets a new life. Sometimes we need to get rid of our old self.